Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in today's video, you'll be learning how to create this detailed styrofoam packaging render using Cinema 4D, Volume Builder, and our new polystyrene foam collection in Grayscale Gorilla Plus. All right, let's head on into Cinema 4D and let's get started. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D and let's get started. Now, if you've been following our tutorials for years, you know that we love to start from scratch so that you could follow along from scratch and know every step to get to the final result. Well, that has its perks, like learning how to go from scratch and add the things that make your scene beautiful step by step. But when it comes to things like cameras and HDRIs and basic render settings, honestly, they're really similar in many of the scenes that we're creating. So rather than literally go <laughs> explain how to set up a camera, add depth of field, how to tweak your render settings, how to turn on redshift, how to do all this stuff, um, we have now created starter scene files to make this so much easier. And they're not just great for tutorials, they're great for production as well, so that you don't have to start from an empty scene like this every time you open a new project. So if you haven't downloaded these scene files, click down below or up here in YouTube. They're completely free, and we made them to help you speed up your work as well. So I'm gonna open up the Redshift one, but so many of the things that we're about to do are identical across the board when it comes to using Octane or Arnold as well. Okay, so if you have the scene file, open it up, and you know, if you watched our last tutorial, that it's all set up. We have HDRI lighting, we have cameras, and now we're ready to build the look that we want without having to set all that stuff up from scratch. Okay, now that we have this ready, let's build our cute little styrofoam. I'm first of all just gonna turn off our shader ball by holding down Option on or Alt on your keyboard and double clicking on these traffic lights. Uh, now we need to set up our little piece of styrofoam. So let's start with a cube and I'm just gonna scale this cube way down. Scale is super important, especially when working with realistic materials and subsurface scattering like our styrofoam has, which we'll add later. You wanna make sure you model and create things at the correct scale. So something like 25 centimeters uh, is somewhere around 10 inches. I think that's a good place to start. Um, so if that's 25 centimeters wide, let's do something like 10 centimeters thick. Maybe 15 is a good start. And then let's also do 15 for the height. Uh, maybe we bring that down a little bit more, 12 centimeters. Yeah, okay. So uh, that is the first part of our little styrofoam block. Now I wanna zoom in so that I can move my camera around and orbit. Uh, if you're using the scene file, you just have to delete any protection tags of things that you want to move. So I'm just gonna delete that protection tag on our 100 millimeter camera. And we're going to duplicate this cube. So I'm just gonna hit Command C, Command V, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees by grabbing the rotate, holding Shift, it'll uh, snap to 10 degree increments and we're starting to create this little plus um, piece out of styrofoam. So I don't like how narrow that plus is, so I'm gonna grab both of these and just make this a little bit longer so we have a little bit more to play with. Okay, so uh, how do we start to combine this into geometry that we can add and subtract and bool things out of without using old school bools? Well, this is where the volume mesher and volume builder is gonna be really powerful to build this. So if you have this little menu here, uh, go ahead and click this and grab a volume builder, volume mesher. If you don't see this icon, you can hit shift C and just search for it in your commander. And this is gonna be where we build all of this awesome geometry to create the styrofoam look. So um, the first thing we need to do is add our cubes into the volume builder. And we're gonna deal with the volume mesher later. And by default, uh, especially at this scale, there's just not enough geometry going around. There's all these little voxels and uh, certainly doesn't look like a piece of styrofoam. So what do we do? Well, let's go into volume builder and instead of your so voxel size being 10 centimeters, let's make it 0.2. Um, and because we're working at this small scale, um, it should round things out. And now each of these little voxels uh, are created and now it's giving us more of this plus shape. So what, what does this give us? Well, this, this gives us the power to create and model our little piece of styrofoam um, using voxels and using a thickness rather than polygons, okay? And then, and then later we're gonna add the polygons with this volume mesher, okay? So 
uh, so far so good. But how do we start to add those little concave elements? Well, let's grab this sideways cube, the first one we made, and let's again, duplicate it, bring it into our hierarchy here. And now I'm gonna grab it, scale it, uh, move it up in Y axis by grabbing our little uh, move tool here. I'm gonna grab scale and scale this down. And this is gonna be our first hole that we cut into this little pl plus piece of startup foam. Okay, so in your volume builder, you're gonna see that we have our three cubes and we can name these if you want, subtract, okay? And now in our volume builder, this subtract, we can come into our mode and say subtract. So look what it does. Well, this cube now cuts a hole wherever we want it. In fact, if we move it down a little deeper, it will create this little cavity where maybe our product sits in the piece of styrofoam, for example, okay? So this is the basic trick of how we're gonna build all the detail in this little piece of styrofoam, okay? So let's keep going. Uh, first thing I wanna do before we duplicate more cubes is add a little bit of roundness to these cubes. Um, I'm gonna grab all of these and I'm gonna go to object and go to fill it uh, and add a radius of, let's go with 0.5 and then let's go with more subdivisions, something like five. You could really crank your subdivisions, especially when you're using the volume builder because um, the volume builder and the mesher will kind of override any extra geometry that you add. So I, I tend to go higher subdivisions when I'm working with the volume builder and then let the mesher create a, a cleaner mesh or use something like the remesher at the end to kind of simplify it. Okay, so now, now that we have that, we have this rounding uh, in our corners that's gonna be great when we start to build this all together. Now, something to keep note of is if we hit render, there's nothing here. It's just our floor. Um, so this is what the volume mesher does. Once you have the piece of geometry that you think looks good, you, you wanna put it into the mesher. And, uh, and now, of course, when we hit render, you're gonna see that we have our little piece of styrofoam block. Um, okay, so what do we do now? So th this is just the basics, but how do we add all this little awesome details and the logo and all that stuff? Well, it's the same process using the volume builder, just more detail. So I'm gonna turn off our render here. And in fact, uh, let's go into the standard mode, just so we can kind of get closer into our scene here without having to worry. Just give us more room, okay. So uh, from here, we want to, let's add these little handles on the side. So I'm gonna grab our subtract. I'm going to duplicate it, put it in our volume builder, and I want to cut out this little piece right here, okay? Uh, but how do we make this identical on the other side? Well, one way to do this is to hit Shift C and type in symmetry. S-Y-M, that should pull it up. Grab the generator, symmetry generator, pull it down into your hierarchy and put that new subtract symmetry in there. And by default, if you made the cube the same way I did, it is going to be mirrored on the x-axis. Since it's mirrored on the x-axis, it's showing up on the other side, which means if we move this symmetry over here or this cube under the symmetry, it will automatically move the other one. So now if we go into our volume builder, go to our symmetry and say subtract again, we now cut out these little holes over here. Isn't that great? Okay. Um, so now we have uh, these little side holes. Let's go ahead and move this up a little bit. And I wanna take the uh, cube and subtract it in the, it looks like Z direction to make this hole a little bit smaller because we're gonna add some detail on this side as well. Okay, so from here, let's go ahead and add more detail to our main cavity here. So I'm gonna bring this up and make a shallow piece of cavity. Then I'm going to duplicate that subtract, bring it into the hierarchy, make sure that that new subtract is also subtracted. And this one's going to go even deeper. So let's go ahead and grab that new cube, make it deeper, but also we could just grab this little node here on the side and pull it in so that we have kind of a stepped, a layered step into this piece. 
And in fact, let's grab the other main one and, and make even more room. Because I think we're just gonna put like a logo or something in here, okay? So now we have this nice detail there. We have our little uh, side handles. So when it's in the box, you can kind of like pull it out. Let's go ahead and grab our shallow cube, which I think is this one. Nope, that's the deeper one. Let's grab the shallow one, that's this one. Uh, and again, we could rename this. If you're uh, smarter uh, than me, you can say uh, um, subtract uh, uh, shallow, subtract, okay? And this one, I wanna rotate around. So let's grab our rotate tool and let's rotate it. I'm gonna hold shift again for constraining to 10 degree increments. I'm gonna make this a little bit larger and let's go into our builder and say subtract again. And this piece I'm gonna make even more shallow. I uh, grabbed the wrong one, if you do that, hit undo just like I did and make this piece super shallow. So we're just creating more detail and um, kind of pieces of interest, but also this is how styrofoam looks, right? Like it's not just one, piece of slab, it has these little details to let the, obviously let the product sit in here. Um, I don't like how wide that is, so I'm just gonna grab this and make it a little bit more shallow. Okay, so we got our little plus, we have our cavity, which is looking cool. Um, now let's add a, a couple little details to this side here as well. I wanna use another symmetry object, so let's just grab and duplicate the symmetry object. Again, pull it down into the volume builder. And for this, I wanna take these cubes and move them in and let's move them up. And I wanna make little teeny tiny little nubs. Okay, I don't know if that's a technical term, but I wanna make these little little square nubs. Um, smaller than that, let's go with two by two by two. That's closer. And I wanna move it up and this might be still a little bit too large. So let's go with 1.5, 1 1.5, 1 1.5, okay? All right, now we're talking. Now our uh, radius is a little bit large for this scale, so I'm just gonna shrink that down. And I want these to be the subtracted ones. So let's go into our volume builder, go to symmetry and go to subtract. So look at these cute little holes we made there. Let's zoom in and kind of align this a little bit better. And let's go to, let's go to the, no, let's go to the subtract cube and just move this so it's more square in the, in the corner, boom. Okay, I like that. All right, so that's nice. Now, remember if this, had a matching top piece of styrofoam, for example, we, we need to cut other holes into the bottom so that it would fit on top of its little brother, right? Like if this was sandwiched on top of each other. So how do we do that? Real simple, duplicate the symmetry object again, bring it into the volume builder. This time, I don't wanna make it subtract, I wanna leave it union, but I do wanna take the cube that's under it and move it down so that we have our matching positive side nubbin. Okay, again, not the technical term, but I think we're close. Okay, so now we have both. Boom, bam, okay? So checking the, the size of this, making sure it's centered, making sure it's looking good. All right, so this is looking nice. Uh, however, we're missing our little logo. So uh, in the original piece, I, it said tactile here to represent our material collection um, that we create to you know, make all these beautiful materials. These are all tactile materials. You can learn more about that down below. Uh, these are all super high quality materials and that's what we'll be using to, uh, to uh, make this look beautiful here in just a second. Okay, so you can add whatever logo you want. You could add text if you want it to say uh, any word. I would just add a text object, okay? And um, you would scale this way down and rotate it, boom, I'm gonna rotate it to 90 degrees, bring it up, and instead of trying to move it into position, I'm just gonna go into the text object itself and go to middle align, move it down, again, scale it down to fit, and this is where you could go in and, and say whatever you want. I think in the original it said tactile, boom, just like that, 
and it was a much better uh, typeface. I don't know if I have the exact one, but we could definitely pick a nicer one. Intermedium, that's a nice one. Shrink it down. Now here's the real key. You can't just add it to your volume builder. You also have to add a little bit of caps. So go to your caps. You can see there's no rounding at all. So let's turn that up. That automatically gives it a little bit better of a geometry here. Just by adding, let's go with 0.5 roundness, okay? Um, we might be able to go a little bit smaller, 0.3. Let's go with that for now. And you can see there's one other issue, which is some of the geometry just, there's not enough geometry here to make this E, for example, really a square E. It's got this weird rounded thing. So what's going on there? So this is the volume measure. Remember, when we originally made the volume measure, we set it up, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's the volume builder. Uh, the volume builder has 0.2, okay? And 0.2 centimeters is, is pretty good enough geometry to really start to build this thing. But for the final product, you probably wanna drop this down even more. So let's go to 0.1 and see what happens. You could see now that the text is much more legible it's creating much more detail and it's just overall creating way more geometry. Look at that thing. Look at that thing, it's beautiful. Um, now, if you have a logo, for example, that you want to put here, I wanna show you how to do that too. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna open up a recent scene and this is uh, the Grayscale Gorilla logo. So this is just an AI file of our Grayscale Gorilla logo. If you have your logo for your company or you know any logo you wanna use, go ahead and grab it. Uh, I'm just gonna click OK for the default settings. It's gonna open a new scene file, and here we are with the logo. Now, of course, we need to extrude it. Let's hit Shift-C, extrude, extrude. There you go, just gotta type it properly. Uh, here's the generator. Grab the extrude generator, put the logo under it, under your extrude object, you wanna make sure you go down and click on hierarchical. Uh, and uh, you probably pronounce it better than I will. Click on that and boy oh boy, do we have a giant extrude. And this is because the logo is pretty small by default. When it was made in Illustrator, it's just a little teeny logo. So let's scale this up. And you may have this issue, maybe not. Uh, and now we have, uh, it, it's still pretty <laughs> extruded. We don't need 100 centimeters, but maybe five will do. And now we have our logo. So same process from this point. All you have to do is copy and paste it into this scene file. And this is where you would rotate it 90 degrees. Then we move it up, scale it down. And we have the exact same uh, setting here when we add it to our hierarchy. And hopefully we have enough geometry for this to show up. This is a really thin logo, but if it's not showing up in the way that you want, make sure you play around with this volume builder voxel size. If it's too small, you're gonna to introduce too much geometry and it could get really slow in your viewport. But you do wanna turn this down until you get legible text. So let's turn off this text just for now. And now that our logo is in the volume builder, we can go in here and uh, make sure the setting is correct, which is union. Now we can come in here and move this up or down until it's connected to the geometry the way that we want. All right, let's go ahead and move it up a little bit more. We just want it peeking out. And this is good. Feels like we might need a little bit more geometry just to be able to see into this logo. So again, this is where you can come into your volume builder and do 0.05. And you're gonna see we're gonna add even more geometry and then we're gonna add even more um, legibility to all of this stuff here. Okay, so now that we have this, how do we make it look beautiful? Let's go back to our startup scene and let's hit play on our viewport and let's just see what this looks like. So it kind of looks like a piece of styrofoam, uh, but it's missing a few things. One is it's out of focus. And the other one is there's no styrofoam material on it. So it's just a white piece of clay basically right now. Uh, so how do we fix that? Well, if you're following along and using the default scene file, all you have to do is grab the focus null, which is included here in the file, grab your place tool and literally just click on the area that you want to be in focus and it will be in focus. 
Okay, so now that we have that, let's set up our uh, scene here. First thing I wanna do is go into our render settings and turn this to 1920 uh, by 1080. Get some classic uh, HD going on. It's like low res HD at this point, but it's the right ratio. Uh, and then we wanna start to set up our final camera in the way that uh, we want it to look. So that's, that's great. Now, because we're using this pre-made scene file, we have an HDRI turn on, we have um, some light coming in, we have our floor, we have a lot of the basics ready to go. Uh, that logo looks off center to me and it's bugging me. And uh, if it's bugging you, let's fix it too. <laughs> let's grab the extrude and let's just move it a little to the left. All right, hopefully that's not too far to the left now. Um, okay, that's a little bit better. <laughs> Okay, so what do we do from here? Well, uh, first thing we'll do is change the background. So this concrete that is uh, a default in the scene looks pretty good. Uh, but I think in the final render, uh, we used a material from the EMC material collection. Um, this is, uh, if you have not played with the EMC materials, there is so much stuff in here, like 300 materials or so. Uh, and there's one that's really beautiful called matte, rotary matte. It's like basically a matte cutter. <laughs> Uh, where you have those roller roller cutters. And uh, I like the black one. I think that's the one used in the final scene. Where do we put it? We put it in environment. There's a ground built right in and you could just literally drag it on top of the ground and it will replace it in the scene ready to go. Now, uh, this scene, this ground is on angle. Uh, so all we have to do now is if we want the grid to line up is to grab the ground, grab our rotate tool, hold shift, and uh, now it will align to uh, 45 degrees. So sh it looks like shift uh, actually aligns five degree increments. And now we scale that material down. So let's, um, now we could scale the material down or we could scale the ground down. Let's scale the ground down. Uh, click the ground, click the scale tool over here and let's scale down until this grid pattern gets close to the edge of the styrofoam. Boom, boom, bam. All right, once you have a camera angle all set up, I'd like this top down centered look here. Let's start talking about how to make this look like realistic styrofoam. Now, this is where Grayscale Gorilla has your back. Just like so many materials over the last few years, we've been capturing high quality materials that allow you to drag and drop beautiful looking realistic materials on your objects. And we just introduced our polystyrene foam collection. So if you're a member, make sure you go download these so you can follow along. And you can see we captured the white and the black styrofoam and that weird blue stuff. I don't know why they use it, but we captured it so you can use it in your projects as well. And what's great about our capture process is, first of all, they're drag and drop, ready to go. And the second thing is, is everything is dialed in, including displacement and subsurface scattering, all the things that make realistic materials real are included and ready to go. All you have to do is drag and drop. In this case, we do have to do one more thing is just scale it properly and turn the UVs correct. So let's go into our projection and turn it to cubic mapping. And I have a feeling we're gonna have to scale this down a little bit. Let's go, let's go nine by nine and look at where we are there. Oh baby, that's, that is so much better. So you can see the subsurface scattering is actually letting light leak through these little pieces uh, here's another good example. The light is actually coming through and showing to the camera, um, not just looking like hard plastic with a styrofoam material on it. It's actually acting like real styrofoam because it's captured from the real deal. So uh, I wanna show you another one of my favorites, this black one here, just while we have this camera angle, let me drag it on here. Uh, maybe you're going for that darker look or maybe you're trying to recreate this look for a real piece of packaging. Check out these as well. I'll finish this tutorial using uh, this one, the number seven, which I think was used in the original render as well. Now this is looking pretty good. Let's also add some displacement. If you're following along in Arnold, you wanna follow along with our displacement tutorial. Make sure you go watch that one here on YouTube. If you're using Octane, you basically get uh, displacement by default. Just drag in that material and you have displacement right on your object. And if you're using Redshift like me, all you have to do is go into your tags, go to go to your render tags, click on Redshift object, go to your geometry tab, turn on override, turn on enabled, and turn off screen space adaptive. 
go to minimum edge length and set this to one. Go to maximum subdivisions and set this to two or three. Let's go with three and then turn on displacement. Now, once you do that, the geometry is going to uh, probably be a little bit more displaced than you want it. Yep, just like I thought. So here's the displacement in action, but the default of one centimeter is just too much. So let's tone that down by going to displacement scale and setting this way, way smaller, something like 0.1. A little goes a long way with displacement, especially with this type of styrofoam. In fact, that looks great. Look at all the extra detail that we get here on all these little uh, uh, pieces of, I don't know, what do you call this? This is the Voronoi of the styrofoam. The Is this a nugget of styrofoam? What do you call this stuff? Um, but that, look at all the extra detail we got because displacement is built into tactile materials, it is that easy to add it to your scene to make it look even more realistic. Okay, from here, I would highly recommend you play with your lighting. I love the default lighting here right in the scene. Um, again, we're using the default scene files. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you go watch it. And from here, I'm just gonna rotate our light around until I see something um, with a little bit more character. So. I like this top down look where the lighting's coming more from the top. I'm gonna spin it even more so it's coming from the top. Now that's nice. It's got a nice hot highlight here on the top and we got some nice shadows. And let's keep going all the way over to the other side. And this might make the logo more readable coming in from the left hand side here. And this top shadow's bugging me. So let's keep rotating it until we get more of a side shadow. And that is looking pretty dang good. From here, I would highly recommend uh, dialing in your lighting and moving your camera until you get it the way you want. I love this look, I'm gonna stay here. And if you're following along in Octane and Arnold, remember all almost everything we did here because we're using this default scene file was identical. You're just dragging and dropping the Arnold version or the Octane version of this material and dialing in it. Thanks again for watching everybody and let me know in the comments down below what you thought about using this starter scene file for tutorials like this. It certainly helps speed up the beginning part where we're setting up lights and cameras. We could skip all that and jump straight into the point of this actual tutorial. But I want to hear from you. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And as always, we'll see you in another video really soon. Bye everybody.